Okay, welcome to another edition of Q It Up with the Q Brothers. That's I'm us. John Quartrucci. And I'm Ralph Quartrucci. How you doing today, Ralph? You know what? Uh, I'm doing fine. Thank you for asking. Why? Whoa, a little dramatic pause there. Before well, you-, you know, these last two weeks, I have to admit, feel longer than most. I don't know why. Maybe it's because there's no holidays. I think, I think the, the working from home is kind of wearing on me a little bit. Yeah. And I'm feeling... Just a every little, day is the same. I don't feel any, you know. Well, think about, uh, think about people who aren't working. I can't even imagine. Anything. I feel lucky. I feel, uh, I feel like a piece of my brain has been removed from my body, and I feel uh, kind of stupid sometimes. Oh, and you're that, saying because you're not working, really. You yeah. are, but no, I well, feel bad for the people who aren't working and have no money. Oh, well, that's, that's a whole different answer. That's the one yeah, that yeah. I just that's, can't even imagine putting myself no, in their position. So I'm lucky, but it does, it's wearing on me a little bit. Yeah. And because there's no, I don't see a light at the end of the tunnel at this point. So, yeah, well, but that's a small complaint. Otherwise, I'm feeling great. Well, so that's, thanks. A, that's again, a thanks for asking. Way we kick off this podcast because that's what we do. I think so we anyway, just lost everybody, but okay. No, no, no. It's the first nine minutes. We're good. They're okay. still here. So uh, this is what I, uh, I've been thinking about. So uh, I've been watching sports on TV. Okay. And, So-called uh, sports. Yeah. Well, exactly. E- exactly. The only thing I've really enjoyed uh, watch, watching is golf, only because huh. when you play golf, it's like what they're doing right now with no yeah. fans, right? Yeah. So I can relate to that. But the football, the baseball, all these sports with no fans. Yeah, uh, here's the thing. It's uh, hard to watch. Yeah. I'm looking at the baseball like it's a high school game without the crowd, but the football isn't bothering me as much. I don't like seeing those stupid shots they have of the crowds with the well, guys sticking their face in the, yeah. so I don't miss that. And frankly, football, you can get away with it if you just stay tight on the players. Well, that's the what they're doing, right? They're not showing, yeah. the, they're not the, showing the stand. I get the they're stupid crowd noise they're pumping in is a little right. funky, but. But the problem is like uh, the Patriots just played Seattle. Yeah. And uh, Seattle's got a big advantage at home because of the crowd. Right. And that, that uh, advantage was nullified. And, and the, it, it, it was really weird to watch it because whenever you see games at that stadium, it's crazy how yeah. loud. But anyway, so, so having – Wait, one second. I'd like to know who they hired. Who's the person? I want to see the behind the scenes of the guy who's doing the crowd noise. Oh, who they get to create the crowd noise? Not create. I think they're using video game crowd noise, but he has to, that person, he, she, whoever, has to decide when they're supposed to oh, crank it up. And, mean, as the game is going on. Yeah, and sometimes you might hear a boo if a, a yeah. ref doesn't. I mean, that's no, not I will new, say they're, they're doing a good job with that. Not bad, and that's a new position. I mean, if you don't really there. pay attention, sometimes you, you forget there's no crowd there. But it's different That's, with the players. I mean, you well, can, I know they don't have the energy, and I'm sure. Yeah, they don't get you know, up. they're not feeding off that. But anyway, the yeah. reason. So that's the reason why I wanted to do this a little differently. So the first week we talked about how the podcast got started, a little background, and then the next week we really got into our backgrounds and our family. That was exciting too. Well, uh, you know what? Uh, we got some good feedback on it, which really? is I was from, actually surprised. from our two biggest fans. Well, I will tell you that. Uh, <laughs> I went over to my folks' house the other day, and I pulled up YouTube on their TV, and we watched both podcasts, and they were both smiling because, uh, first of all, they loved what we were talking about, but second of all, they've never heard you talk quite as much as you did. Well, I, I think they haven't. Well, maybe. I think Without a, alcohol. A, Without alcohol. Right. Uh, a, it's an easy audience. They're a piece of cake, those two. Well, that's true. And B, yeah, mom said, I haven't heard some of the things you said. I just have never heard you say before. Well, well she thinks you made some of it up. But dad no. was like, no, this really happened. No, like, none really? of it was. That's all. I tell the truth. That's right. You are a truth. I'm teller. a truth teller. So. so so, what I wanted to do this week was uh, back to sports because, as you can see, I've moved my location. I'm in my sports bar downstairs, right. and I'm a big sports guy. Now, uh, uh, and Ralph knows this, baseball is my sport. I love baseball. I've loved it almost my entire life. I'm a diehard Red Sox fan. I played baseball. My brother Ralph is actually in the Hall of Fame. That's I mean, true. That's how good he was. I okay. peaked at 13. Um, and he won MVP. You did peak at 13. You won MVP, I think, at Fantasy Camp. Uh, uh, we'll talk about that later. I didn't yes. win. Well, we're going to talk about Fantasy Camp later, but I didn't win squat. But I don't even want to get into that. That's later on. Um, so what I wanted to do was ask you about sport movies. And I, I want to do it 
uh, sports movies that you like, maybe a hidden gem sport movie that people might not be aware of, but that you would recommend to watch. Uh, and, and it can be all over the place. It can be any sport, uh, or, you know, a great, like for instance, uh, one of my uh, favorite baseball movies. You know what movie is this is, Ralph? Is that from Bulldog? Obviously, you're not a big baseball movie. Oh, that's no. Uh, I know that's that's uh, the 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 uh, the natural. The natural. I can, listen. Roy Hobbs. Listen, everybody needs to understand this. When this camera turns on and I start doing these, I forget everything. <laughs> so already, I'm racking my brain trying to figure out sports because we don't talk about what we're going to talk about. No, that's right. And Unspoken. we do a little bit. We kind of give a premise, but we don't specific, and we can, everything's off the top. And I forget. Like the natural is one of my favorite movies. I know that like the back of my, I've used it in videos I've done and I should have known it like that. So anyway, go on. So that's a New York Knights, Roy right. Hobbs. Um, so I'm going to get to that movie too. Cause I, I love that baseball movie, but I wanted to start with you first. Any sport movies that, uh, you know, there's, there's old standbys that everybody loves, but uh, along with that, maybe something people haven't heard of before. Well, I, I again, I'm not going to be able to pull these off the top of my head. Well, that's the whole point specific. of it. Ralph, so I need okay. to. Okay. Well, obviously, we'll just nail number one. Field of Dreams. Uh, my kids still look at me and say, we can't watch it with you because you're going to cry when he does that. You want to have a catch, Dad. Game. Okay. Yeah. So, but underrated or, or not seen Don't a lot. Eight, be, yeah. eight, eight Men Out. Oh, great On sales about oh, the Black yeah. Sox scandal. Fantastic yeah. film. Uh, and all these actors in it who were not at the peak of their thing, but young guys who um, – uh, we're in that film, Cuting John Cusack and D.B. Sweeney played uh, Shoeless Joe Jackson and the guy from uh, Walking Dead played the first baseman, Chip Michael Gandalf, Rooker. I think. I think it was Chick. Michael uh, Just a great film, Michael yeah. Rooker. Yeah. Um, my, one of my favorites, and I'm going to admit something here that, that is going to make me sound like a total weenie. I get choked up. Uh, tin Cup. Oh, Okay, obviously we know my feeling about Kevin Costner, which that's one wow. of the things that mom's a little worried about, but well, whatever. We, well, I promised mom we'd avoid man crushes this Well, week. this is, okay, so my, to a minimum. He, he did a movie called Tin Cup. That scene at the end. Where he's dropping the ball. Where he drops the ball 12 times, and Rene Russo is cheering him on. I swear to God, the room gets really dusty, and it makes me cry. And I, and I think it cry? has to do with cry, like oh. it just chokes me up, because he's being such a jerk. And he's just so hard headed and her reaction to just hit it on Roy, the thing. And then when she says to him at the end, he says, I just blew it. I blew it. She just blew it. They're going to forget who won this. Nobody's going to forget your 12 on the last time. And I just like, I'm gone. And that's a great, and uh, it's a great golf movie. Ron Shelton, you know, director of uh, Bull Durham as well. I just, I just love that film. And and Kevin Costner could play golf. I mean, he, he was a quite, he was a pretty good golfer. He looked like that's my biggest complaint about sport movies uh, when the actors just don't look like. Well, look could, at <laughs> Tim Robbins, who I love in right. Bull Durham. Bull Durham. Don't look like he could throw the ball. No, but Kevin yeah. Costner could. Yeah, Costner's an athlete. Switch hitter, switch hitter. He caught. You could tell the way he threw the ball. But the same thing in Tin Cup. He was he was actually a good golfer and made a lot of those shots that are in the movie. Right. He did my other favorite one where he uh, pitches the one hitter or the no hitter. Oh, uh, yeah. Uh, for the love of the game, uh, I think it's game. called. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, when he directed by Sam Raimi. Which right is, now the most important thing to me is my doctor. And Kelly Preston's looking at him all sad. Right. Yeah. Uh, that, that anyway, was, I mean, uh, and of course, Bad News Bears, first one, the original. Okay. With Walter Matthau, Tatum O'Neill. That one, um, I said Field of Dreams, Slap Shot, which oh. is a big bane of our existence in my podcast. Well, it should be because it's a it's Mystery Alaska. Oh, I was okay. I was going to bring that one up <laughs> with Russell Crowe Crow and Burt Reynolds. Reynolds. Yeah, and <laughs> Russell Crowe. Sudden Death with Sudden Jean Claude Van, Van Damme. Van Damme? It's a hockey movie. It's not really a hockey movie. It's not really. We can't put that in the sports thing. Okay. Well, um, and um, uh, obviously. Um, uh, Longest Yard, original, Burt Reynolds. Yeah, not the Adam Sandler. Right. And uh, Major League, first Major League. Yep. I thought was fantastic. Yeah, and Charlie Sheen could really throw. He could throw. He was, he was you know, recruited to be a Major League yeah. player. Although they did, I don't know if you knew this, they moved up the mound a little bit. That's okay. So, so he'd come across as faster than he well, was. Well, he did. But he still anyway, those are my few. Um, football, oh, I'm sorry, two more from the 70s. Um, uh, North Dallas 40. Nick Nolte um, and Mac Davis, Davis. Yeah. football film, and the one with Burt Reynolds and um, Jimmy Tough. 
semi tough. Those Chris two, I think, are, wasn't Chris Chris Christopherson. Yeah. yeah, those are my uh, '70s picks for sports. North movies, Dallas really Forty. Like. The scene I remember that sticks in my head is at the very end when he throws Mac Davis throws the ball to Nick Nolte, and Nick Nolte just goes like that and let it hit the ground. Yeah, they that's say. I, remember about that I mean, that's movie. written by obviously uh, an NFL uh, player. It's most realistic depiction of how those yeah. guys are treated. Well, they were shooting up the whole game. Well, that whole thing, the drugs and everything, uh, and the way they treated the players. And, you know, the the coach in that is fashioned after the Dallas Cowboys coach, Tom Landry, analytical computer guy. It's a good good film, and it's written by an ex-NFL player, so it's pretty pretty real. Anyway, what are yours? Uh, Well, I've – as you can see, The Natural, because it's really – I wouldn't call it a, a true baseball movie, but it was more of like a fable. Mm-hmm. And uh, uh, Robert Redford uh, chose number nine because of Ted Williams, lefty, lefty swing. Um, I thought he was a little too old for it, but the way it was shot, like, like I think Glenn Close never looked more beautiful oh, yeah. than in that movie. The that way scene, that scene where she stands up and the, the lights light behind, behind her. her. Oh, my God. And the ending, which is different from the book, in the book he strikes out. Oh, really? I didn't know that. Yeah, yeah. And Randy Newman of Short People fame did the score for that yeah. movie. And always that last scene with the blood and he hits the ball out of the park and it hits the lights and the sparks are going everywhere and he's running around the field and you hear that music. Yeah. Ugh, I just That's a fable. It. That's a fable. It's a fable. Exactly. Right. And uh, and he looked like he could play too, again, which is, uh, I like that. Uh, Bull Durham, obviously. Uh, you already named Major League. Um I like Pride of the Yankees with uh, uh, not Lou Gehrig with uh, Gary Cooper, who played Lou Gehrig. It's actually for an older movie. It's actually really uh, well done because they did uh, William Bendix. I don't know if you know who he is, but they yeah. did the Babe Ruth story where yeah. he hit a home run and killed a dog hmm. and had to bring the dog to the hospital. It was just ridiculous, and the guy didn't look like he could play either. But uh, the Pride of the Yankees is a really good movie. Is that the one too where? Um... He couldn't bat left-handed, yeah. so they flipped it around and reversed yeah, the he film. he was a righty, yeah. and they reversed the film and put uh, all the uniforms backwards. Right. So instead of running to first base, he, he ran to third base. Yeah, because that put- was a big problem with um, – uh, I was listening to the commentary track of uh, Field of Dreams. Yeah. And Ray Liotta didn't play it. He played it the opposite. Right. And the director was like, yeah, I kept getting these letters, and – He's like, hey, this movie's about ghosts and corn, and you're going to worry about that? Give me a exactly. break. He can, be, he can be any position he wants if he's coming back as a ghost. Who cares? And that scene where uh, he almost took out Kevin Costner. That's legit. Was unscripted. Yeah. Uh, so that just happened. And it was like, yeah, and Kevin Costner played it perfectly. Yeah. Okay. And he gets up, brush, and, and Ray Liotta gives him that look. Uh, so That's I, my guy. Kevin Costner's my guy. That's why I'm telling you. Well, you know. Because he is, he's such, back then especially, he was so, he was so athletic. Yeah. That, that's the thing, like Major League, uh, Tom Berenger, who I really liked in the movie, just didn't look like he could no. play. No. Uh, I like Eight Men Out. Uh, those guys look like most of them, not the pitcher, uh, as Seacott. He, he yeah. didn't look David like David Strahan. David Strahan. He, he, with the way he was throwing. But yeah. the other players really looked, because they were so young. I think they were, like, playing, too. They all, they, when you listen to that track, I think I have that one, too. They all played baseball. They were playing, like, games. Oh, really? Ball. Yeah, those guys all were having a ball. Well, they definitely looked like they could play. Yeah. Although, yeah. Uh, Michael Rooker looked kind of awkward at first base. But, but that's my one complaint about sport movies yeah. is – Oh, if you put someone in, they can't play. They just play. don't even attend. Oh, yeah. Well, that's what it, right. It looks fake, right? It takes you right out uh, of the film. Um, Kelly Lee could throw I the love ball the longest in, in, yard. I'm sorry, longest yard, yeah. Uh, Kelly Lee and uh, Bad News Bears. Yeah, he could throw the ball. Kelly, uh, who was that? Um, uh, he, yeah, he, that, he's in. And Tatum O'Neill could throw. She could yeah, pitch. Yeah. I mean, that was for real. Yeah. So I like that. Um, but there's two movies I want to talk about that are uh, most people haven't seen. In fact, one of them, I think I've seen it once, and it was a long time ago. I don't even know it's available anymore. It's a film called Long Gone, and it was made in 1987, starring William Peterson and Virginia Madsen. Oh, yeah. 1950s Tampico Stogies baseball team i've heard about the film they get a black player and they say his name's jose brown so he's from mexico he's not black it's really really well done it's funny william peterson's really good in it and the ending it's got a typical well it, it appears to be a typical sport movie ending 
that completely does something that no other movie's done to win the game. Spoiler alert, they win the game, but it's how they win it that's so funny. It's really good, and the, it's, it's a period piece uh, that's, that's really well done. And the other one is, and I've only seen this movie once, it's a golf movie called Dead Solid Perfect, uh, made in 1988 and starring Randy Quaid before he went insane. It's a really, really good golf movie. Really? And if you get a chance to see either one of those, uh, I recommend them highly. The really, first really one's good. called what? Long Ball? A long Gone. Long Gone. Great, long Gone. It's got a theme song. Okay. And uh, the other one's Dead Solid Perfect. Okay. In fact, there's an actress in it. I can't remember her name. It's the only nude scene she's ever done, Ralph, where – he bet her she wouldn't go get ice naked. So she leaves the hotel room, walks down the hallway, gets the ice, walks back to the room. Only nude scene she's done in her career. And w- when I looked it up on uh, uh, IDMB. IMDB. <laughs> all the reviewers were talking about that. Oh, <laughs> about really? That and one. does he play a golfer? Yeah, he plays a golfer. A hard luck golfer who's trying to get a sponsor. Uh, Jack Warden plays his uh, sponsor. Okay. Uh, well, he was pretty good in another sports movie called um... – don't don't you say Caddyshack too? No, no, the no. bowling one. Oh, Kingpin! Kingpin. Well, Kingpin. he was great, Kingpin. I didn't even think about and it. Bill Murray. Know. Bill Murray at the end of that movie bowled those three strikes. Legit. I know. Uh, I don't call that a sports movie. That's but a sports I did, movie. There's I bowling did like in there. That movie a lot. Speaking um, of bowling, there's a great documentary called League of League of Ordinary Gentlemen. It's a it's a documentary about bowlers. It's pretty good. About the PBA tour? Yeah. Really? With some of the classic guys, the guy who does the the chop, what's his name? I can't. He he, he invented I, the bowling chop. I don't know a lot of so, PBA. But bowling. anyway, Randy Quaid was uh, pretty good in in Kingpin. He was great in Kingpin. Oh yeah, when he comes out of the refrigerator. With so, but yeah, that's a sports movie beers. too. I forgot about that one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that is. A, I don't really call all that a sport yeah. movie you're fro- you're frozen um, you're freezing up every now and again but we'll fix I'm that tr- trying to think of uh you know i don't know why uh and i i sorry i can't remember his name there's a there's a documentary on netflix about this team he bought in uh, seattle and it was a minor league team oh is this kurt russell's father yes yeah that's Have a good dog that? i've seen it it's like the, it's called the unlucky something. something. It's, it's, it's got a crazy name, but it's done. It's, it's, it's based incredible. on, and Kurt Russell played on that team for a little well, bit, I think. Well, but he hurt himself. He ended up hurting his knee or something. Yeah. Uh, but it was a bunch of, anybody could try out for this team. That was the whole thing. Anybody. You didn't have to be a ball player. And uh, it started making money. And then they started, uh, the higher ups didn't like that. Cause he was, I guess Kurt Russell's dad was, in fact, Kurt Russell's dad, is one of the guys in the um, in the scene in Magnificent Seven at the very beginning when uh, when Yul Brenner and Steve McQueen ride the uh, the hearse, the the salesman, the two salesmen that gave him the money for it. One of those guys is Kurt Russell's oh. dad. Well, his yeah. dad owned the team, or was he on yeah, the team? Owned the, yeah, team. owned the team. Owned it. Yeah, and he bought hey, it for short money, that's, but he yeah. made it successful. We're forgetting about one of the classic tear jerking sports films ever made in the oh, 70s Brian's song, Brian song. The, the, the original Brian. there's a new one yeah because gail sayers just passed yeah that's a tearjerker that was a tearjerker yeah, back no, when no, i was no, a kid no, the original I will, I will tell you i will tell you that uh the i think the only movie i watched and cried and by the way that was a tv movie that was not a theatrical movie Brian's song right was that movie that last scene when he's on the bed the hose is coming out of his mouth <laughs> And it was James Caan, by the way. Yeah, James Caan. And Billy Kahn. D. Williams. Yeah. Uh, like was, and then, then Gail, Sayers, Gail Sayers does that speech at the end. Oh, my God. It, you're, I'm, I'm glad you called that out, especially after he just passed. Yeah. Um, so that was, uh, that was a great sports movie. Well, what makes a great sports movie? And what Because you, you, you see what – oh, uh, did you like Miracle? Yes. Yes, but I, like, but I like the documentary about that better. There's a documentary yeah. about that, which is better. The other one is we didn't even talk about The Sandlot, which, honestly, well, I'm going yeah, to admit something I've here. Read. I've never seen it, but <laughs> yeah. I know. I own it. I've never watched it. Everybody raves about it, and I, I listened to a podcast about it, and it made me want to watch it again. I never watched it, and I should. But what makes a well, great – okay, back- what makes a great sport? I love people – obviously, I like – 
<clears throat> people winning the big game. That's always a nice, oh, like in, in major Rocky. league. Or, we didn't even mention Rocky. Well, yeah, it's okay. It was great. Rocky's yeah. great. Can't can't deny it. Sports movie was great. Um, but like like in um, a great ending. Uh, Bad News Bears. They don't win the game at the end, right. Right. and it's still a great ending. Yeah. Just be make that trophy that, and stuff it up your ass. They couldn't make that movie. Now they tried to with Billy Bob yep. Thornton. It yeah, just wasn't yeah. the same. Um, yeah, I want to see like Tin Cup is so good because. He just he just overcame some. I don't know that that one's different because he doesn't win anything. It's just I just love his attitude. But like Major League, they win the game. Um, well, they won the pennant, right? You don't know the if they won the World Series because that was kind of good the way they. Oh, uh, the other one. What about uh, Jimmy Fallon? Oh, Fever Pitch. And the only reason that's so great is because they actually were there well, when the, when the Red Sox won. won in 2004. Yeah. In fact, I mean, I didn't love the movie, although Drew Barrymore is a dream. Who doesn't love Drew Barrymore? Well, that's funny because that was the first time that I saw her that I was thinking, oh, my God, this girl is so adorable. Adorable. And as an adult, not as a kid. No. Uh, and I was like, wow, where'd yeah. that come from? And actually, Jimmy Fallon, who I don't necessarily I don't watch his show, I thought he was pretty good in that. Playing, yeah, playing the Boston guy. Yeah. But mostly the people around him, those are like people you sat in with your yeah. – with your. We have yeah. to tell the story about my friend visiting Fenway Park at some point when, when my friend Tom – you remember that? No. I called you and I said, hey, my friend Tom's been to a lot of uh, baseball stadiums. He's never been to Fenway Park, and my brother John has season tickets. And I, and I said to Tom, hey, let me give my brother John a call. Maybe he'll give you a ticket. My friend Tom happens to be a Yankees fan. And when I called you, I didn't mention that. No, and you, you said, yeah, not. let Tom – yeah, I got an extra ticket. He can come to this game. So I say to Tom, Tom, he's got, you got a ticket for you, but you cannot tell him you're a Yankees fan. Because if you do that, he'll get pissed and you'll get people around him. And by the way, these seats were eight rows behind the dugout. Right, okay. so they're right there. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. Tom goes and visits. I get a call from my brother. Jesus Christ. He goes, seventh inning, the kid turns to me and tells me, uh, I can't lie to you. I just want to let you know I'm a Yankees fan. Ralph, don't ever do that to me again. Nobody can – I'll never let you – It's not that – it's not that I hate Yankee fan. No, I do. Yeah. I can't even say that. No, I just was so upset because Ralph knew and didn't tell me. I did, yeah. but I told him not to say anything. Yeah, well, he couldn't keep his mouth shut. I'm I sure mean, how did. stupid is that? Not him. How stupid are you for getting upset about oh, him yeah, being a Yankee yeah. fan? Why, yeah. It's, yeah, that's stupid, but hiding it from me isn't. I'm not going to lie. He could have been more honest, you, but he never would have got in. You knew he was a Yankee fan. He never would have got in. So, anyway. It doesn't matter. So, uh, yeah, good films. I mean, they're all like the natural. He overcomes his odds. All of these things, you can break it down. I can't think, well, Bang the Drum slowly didn't end well. Brian Song didn't end well. <laughs> um, but it told uh, a compelling story. Yeah. Oh, no, they got me, both of them. I think I like, I think the reason why I like baseball movies so much is that I, you know, cause we, we played, I mean, we played our whole lives. Okay. Little I, league, but yeah. No, but it doesn't matter. I mean, we played all the time though. Like, like back in the day, cause my dad was our coach. We had all the equipment when we, we weren't playing little league. We were out playing with all our friends. Right. It wasn't like you had soccer and basketball and all this other stuff. We played baseball and then we played baseball. We were the sandlot. Right. Except and we had wiffle ball, equipment. wiffle ball tournaments, all that stuff. Yeah. Wiffle ball. So, so that's why for me, I, I always felt like, yeah, I can relate to that guy because I've, I've played it. I mean, you know, played. But football, I played football one season. It was uh, peewee football. The, I, I was a very small kid, so the knee pads went down on my ankles, okay? And I originally didn't make the team. And I was – you don't know. I went home that night. I sat next to my bed, and I thank God that I did not make the team because I hated football. They kind of made me play because my brother was really good, my brother Steve. Um, I get a call two days later that they've decided that everyone who tries out gets to make the team. I don't want to be on the team. And so I said, okay, if I'm going to be on the team, I'll play. So one day in practice, I'm running away from the ball. Wherever the ball is, I'm running away from it. And this kid named Sean Kelly – and all I could think of back then was he was six foot 10. Okay. I'm sure he wasn't. Cause I think I might've been 10 years old. He bowled me over. Like I, like I was a feather and I, I went flying. 
And I, I, I remember going home and telling my dad, I'm going to play baseball. I'm yeah. not going to be playing any football. I had zero desire to play football. I could. Just, I didn't want to play yeah. it. I mean, if you look at the, my father, again, we talked about this last week. He used to uh, film the games. And I was on the bench for three quarters and, and a third. And then they put us in at the end if we were way ahead or way behind. Every time they show me, I'm running away from the ball because I don't want to get hit. And if you saw me, you wouldn't want me to get hit. Believe me. But baseball, and I think, I think, I think you love. Is baseball your favorite sport, Ralph? Um, I don't want to. Now, yeah. Um, you're probably not as big a fan as I am. No, I'm but definitely not a fan. I'm not. I mean, I'm a fan, but I'm not a fanatic. If, if you know our, what I mean. No, I mean, no offense, but I'm not. I don't well, freak out. It sounded kind of offensive. Well, I mean. Fan uh, is short for fanatic. That's all that means. That, yeah, that's what dad says. You just yeah, sound just I mean, like dad. Okay. My, I, that could be I worse things, I guess. Our love for baseball comes from my father. Yeah, because and your mother. Your mother, well, your mom was a hockey freak. You, oh, yeah. Bobby oh, Orr, God. hockey freak. Yeah, Bobby Orr, the big bad Bruins. Right. But I remember dad, so our, our father uh, installed boilers, okay? That's what he did, and it was hard, dirty work. But I remember he would come home from work and we would play pickle. We would play uh, hit the bat. Yeah. Uh, we would just play catch for like two hours after yeah. he worked all day, yeah. every single day. I could and never live up to us. that with my kids. Uh, well, you, you think about that. Well, they've got, look, let's be fair. They've got other distractions. Well, they did, didn't. but I could never do what he did or mom did, all the little league games, all the stuff they did. Yeah, that's well, obviously we, we got our love of baseball through yeah. them or sports through them. But what's funny mom, is mom taught me tennis. It was mom who taught me tennis. Games. We didn't go to a lot of games with them. No. As kids. No. Um, in fact, I, we didn't, I mean, you went more than I did, but I went to a few games when I was a kid, but as an adult, I went to a lot more. And then when I met my wife, <laughs> her company had season tickets and she worked for the head guy. So the tickets would come into her. This was starting in, I think, 98. So she would get all the tickets, like that scene in Fever Pitch when the tickets come in. Right. She would get them and distribute them. And because she was doing that, we got to pick games that we wanted. So for the – I mean, we went to opening day like every year for 25 well, years. Well, and then you had that great run starting in well, really 2003, but, but really yeah. – 2004 on well and that's uh, my whole i don't know if you I can know. see the wall but this is a tribute to 2004 because for me that was the single greatest sporting event in my life was when they won the world well Series. that was a, that was my longest week i happened to be working that week with a new york yankees fan and actually ex-wife dawn huge yankees fan i remember dropping Lee, uh, uh, dylan off at a soccer game when we were down we when the red sox were down three games to one or none and you're frozen and three games to none. <laughs> Wait, they were down three yeah. to none. You're still four. There you go. You caught up. And and I dropped Dylan off. Yeah. And I just said to Dylan, Dylan, it's easy to be a Yankees fan. It's hard to be a Red Sox fan. Don't worry, we're going to be fine. And That's what you said, yeah. And oh, I had the grid. That's when I also discovered Bill Simmons, who was writing about it and the thing. And and God, the end of that week when they won. It didn't matter. The World Series was the icing well, on the cake. The, the World the, Series was anticlimactic. When they beat the Yankees that last game, I threw up that night from drinking champagne all night. I never throw up. I never get sick. I was uh, when they won the World Series. I was on a. I was away. I was traveling, and I was alone watching the game. I mean, yeah, it, it was probably perfect because the Yankees I, game or the World Series. No, the World Series, the oh. final game of the World Series. Because I just yeah. sat there on the end of the bed. And I just remember thinking, I, I, I cannot believe this just happened. I yeah. can't believe that. No, that's shocking. Because what, even when they were up against, uh, when they were down three nothing to the Yankees, I don't care what anybody says. Nobody thought they were going to win. No, I, they were, I written, was, they were written off. Win a game. Just yeah. don't embarrass us. Win. Yeah. Well, the rest is history. We don't have to do this. People. I know, this. but but that w listen, that for me was a big. big well, that started it all. But didn't, and then the what? The Patriots won in two thousand one. What was the first year they won their Super Bowl? Yeah, it was Tom the, Brady. It was the, that was 2001. Yeah, so 2001, right up until last year, we were just rolling in riches of sports stuff. So it's hard for people to, to even well, care that we're saying we are, that. Well, well, there are kids born. There are kids born who don't know that Boston right. doesn't win champions. They're going to be in for a sorry. And they don't know what we all went through. I mean, yeah, it was, Patriots. It was, Patriots was pitiful. Patriots so. was awful. And uh, uh, well, I, I don't know. This is not any sports. Yeah, anyway. Okay. What but else? So, 
What so, else you got? Uh, well, uh, I'm trying to think of some other movies. I, I know we're forgetting movies. In fact, I, you know, if you guys subscribe, hit the notification button, hit the like button, leave a comment on what, what movie are we forgetting that uh, maybe meant something to you? Because it doesn't always have to be the underdog wins. Cause, uh, well, we can Rocky, go through that. Okay, you got Any Rocky Given Sunday. Win. Any Given Sunday. Yeah, I, I, that was okay. Rudy. I like the way that was shot. Rudy. Rudy I loved. Hoosiers. Oh, okay. Great movie. Okay. I love Hoosiers. Ben Affleck uh, just did one where he plays an ex-alcoholic uh, who coaches a, a high school team for redemption. It's all about redemption for you. Gene Hackman, redemption for him. But uh, yeah, Hoosiers is one of the greatest films ever made. Um, Breaking Away. Oh, yeah. yeah bicycle a, movie. Oh, that's my not really God. a sport movie, though. Uh, I don't call that a sport that's movie. That's a sport. What do you yeah. say? Bicycle's not a sport? Dennis Quaid. Right. Early Dennis Quaid, uh, uh, the kid from uh, Bad News Bears. Kelly Leak is in there. I can't think of his name. He's in yeah. Watchmen. That guy that plays the guy Bruce in Watchmen. Bruce Davidson. Bruce Davidson's. Uh, oh, no, not Bruce Davidson. No, no. Who's the lead in that? The guy who plays the guy with the mask. I know who you're talking about. Yeah. Uh, Rorschach. Rorschach. I can't yeah. think of the actor's I'm name. Drawing, He's great. I can't believe I'm drawing a blank. Talk. In the I'll look him up. Um, but, I, you know, I, I think if you, can, if you get into these sport movies, like, have you been to a sport movie where people in the crowd just go nuts? Like, they know the outcome or whatever, well, and they just go crazy? Well, Rocky was the biggest one. I didn't the reaction see that everybody movie. had. I never saw. No, you mean movie. like like they get excited, like they're actually watching? Yeah. I don't. I don't know. I have no idea. <laughs> no, uh, seriously, I don't know. If somebody reacted in a sport, how about that TV movie, The Dallas Cowboy Cheerleaders? Do you remember that one? I don't remember that. A Jane Seymour. Is that is that an actual movie? Yeah, she was a reporter doing an undercover story about the cheerleaders. She wanted to say that they're a bunch of bimbos, and she she found that they weren't. That of they course. were redemption. It was, it's all it about was redemption. redemption. Yeah, Jackie uh, Earl Haley. I'm oh sorry, Jackie God. Earl Haley. I couldn't think of that. You're in all our favorite films. Yeah. <clears throat> oh, he's he was great as Rorschach. Um, um, uh, yeah, we should we should move on from this because we could. I I guarantee you, there's a list of 20 things we've missed. Sports movies. You haven't even talked about the Jimmy Pearson story or the. Um, I'm sorry, the Jimmy Pearson story. Isn't that I don't one know who with that is? Oh, Jimmy Pearsall. Pearsall. Did I say Pearson? Yeah, why don't you take that hat off? Anthony, all right? Anthony Joe Joe Hopkins. Anthony Hopkins. Anthony Hopkins. No, Hopkins climbing no up Anthony. The what's back. his name? Psycho. What's his climbing name? Climbing up the screen. Yeah, Anthony, Anthony Hopkins. I'm sorry, Tony Perkins. Tony Perkins. <laughs> See? Yeah. Terrible. You got me all screwed up. When exactly. You said, when you said Pearson. Okay. Anthony All right, so uh, so I thought that would lead us to our next discussion. Oh, and boy. We always bring it back to uh, us. what you and I do. Always bring it back to us. So, and, and I don't know what year it was. Was it 99 the first we time? We did. How many times did we do this? We went three times. That's what I thought. So the last time we went was 2001, the year I got married. No, that no, no. A, I have a 2008. 2008? Yes. Oh, so 2001 was when Dad went. Right. So Ralph and I, so, so what are we I, talking about? Went where? The first one. Okay. So we, Ralph and I went to Red Sox fantasy. Okay. Camp. That's what people are going to, they go to rehab. Where'd they go? No, Red Sox no. fantasy. Camp. Although, I mean, uh, I'm not even going to get into that. So I always wanted to go to Red Sox fantasy camp and I found uh, a group that does it. And I said to Ralph, I go, look, Ralph, I'm going to go. I really don't want to go by myself. Would you like to go too? So Ralph and I go down there. Now, at the time, I think, Ralph, you were playing baseball. And I was playing over 30s baseball, yeah. Were you playing softball too? Might have been. But I was mostly playing hardball. Okay, so I was playing baseball. softball. Okay. I was playing softball. And uh, so we were relatively young. I mean, youngish. Yeah, youngish. So we were in pretty good shape. We were in pretty good shape. Thought we were, yeah. We thought. Right. Okay. So... We go down to camp, we do the tryouts, we get on the same team. Um, who was our first coach? Was it Drago? No, Drago was uh, when dad was there. So I don't know who the coach was. The I first think it year. was Bill Lee. That first year was Bill Lee. So maybe, maybe. So uh, my eye, who I, who I just, I know the guy was nuts, but I loved him. Well, and he was, he was a great coach. He was, he was hilarious. Yeah, that's why we had Janice on our team, right? Janice, yeah. was that her name? Janet? Janet. Good ball player. 
Good yeah. ball player. We had a we had a pretty decent. No, we didn't have a good team. We lost. We lost everything. I think no. We we won one game. We celebrated like we won the World Series. But here's no, the that thing. was two. That was the year. That was two thousand eight. No, okay. that was not two thousand. Uh, they're all melting. We were in great shape, yeah, and we, that was the dad year. That's whatever. Year we, doesn't matter. Two thousand one was the dad year. Okay. So anyway, let me get back to what I was. Yeah, trying speed to. this up. After the third day, we couldn't walk. Right. I mean. Our legs, it was like the Tin Man. Yeah. Could not walk. I it was, was brutal. Taking hot baths every night. I couldn't stretch it out. He couldn't stretch it out. So our parents show up. And uh, I don't know if uh, – did any – did your – No. No, that was the next one. Mm-hmm. My wife showed up too. And we're in the field in agony. But we were also two of the younger guys on the team. So they always wanted us to pinch run for the right. older guys. We we're running for everybody. We couldn't move. Yeah. It was awful. Now, so we went again in 2001, except this time we brought our 67 year old dad. Yep. So we couldn't get my other brother, Steve, to go, which was a bummer, but it was me, Ralph, and my father. Yep. And it was pretty incredible. Uh, yep. At one point, Ralph was at first, my father was at second, and I was at shortstop. So the three Q brothers, the three Quattruccis, were uh, on the field at the same time. Now, my dad did have a fielding percentage of 0, 0, 0. 0.0, 0, because the only ball that came to him, it went by him, and I got it. Right. But the guy could still hit at 67. I think you both won. Well, he went uh, against a pretty tough pitcher. He went three for three. Yeah. Uh, but it was just surreal. Yeah, we both, he and I both won MVP awards that year. Which they gave out like uh, candy. Did you get one of those that year? I don't remember. Well, what Ralph doesn't know is I don't uh, think you did. They gave them out to they gave them out to elderly players who didn't drool, mm. and if they felt that John John jealousy is an ugly thing. Please don't bring it up. It's ugly. it just wasn't pretty. Okay. So then the last year we went two thousand eight. We actually it was the best. Uh, yeah, but what happened that year? Well, that started the fantasy camp. I don't know. What happened? Oh, you don't remember the dinner the night before we started fantasy camp? What well, major event, what major sporting event was playing that night that we were all videotaping? The, what uh, year was that? It was 2008. Though. What year? So, was it? Uh, Patriots were what? Uh, undefeated that yeah, year? Undefeated. And what happened? Oh, David Tyree caught a ball on top of his head. I'll never forget that first day after that dinner. It felt like a funeral procession. Nobody yeah. wanted to be there. Yeah, it was awful. That it night was, was awful. awful. But we had a great team that year. Well, we did, we were stacked. And stacked. Ralph and I knew what we needed to do to get in shape. Baseball. Well, I don't know if I told you, but I met I was on that airplane sitting next to the guy who eventually became our manager. Oh, the tall guy? That guy, I forget his name. Yeah, the who, guy by the way blew the he's the one the who blew, who the blew the game. It for us. But I'm on the plane, I see his giant ring. I said, "Are you a Going to the fantasy camp, yeah, I start talking to him about the thing, and that's how we ended up on his team. Oh, really? Yeah, because he knew me from the airplane, so when he sees our name come up, he puts us on that team, and that team was stacked. Well, Bill Lee, Bill Lee was pissed. Yes, Bill Lee wanted us on his team. I knew I should have taken you guys. Yeah. I have some – we'll see this in the video. I have some great stills of me and Bill Lee. I needed the cue boys. So the last time we went, we were a stacked team. We blew through all the teams. In fact, I think we lost. I think we lost one game. So we end up in the championship. We lost no games. I thought did we, we did. maybe one. I think we lost one game. Yeah. So we go to the championship because we had a stud pitcher. Oh yeah, he was a wasn't he a cop? He was He's a cop. cop from Salem, Massachusetts. And he could he could he, fire. He could throw BBs, and that's the thing in this fantasy camp when you're playing with all old people. You throw a pitcher up there that can throw a strike down the middle. Forget about it. Yeah. The game's over. So, except our coach decided not to put him in. <laughs> well, he had, we had two pitchers, really. Right. And one guy was really good. Another guy was pretty good. Well, yeah. he starts the pretty good guy in the championship. And we're playing, by the way, in the uh, – it was the Twins sta- – no, it was the Red Sox Stadium. So, we're playing in the minor league park for the championship. He decides he's going to put the second best pitcher in. Well, this guy walks everybody. They give up – he gives up four runs, I think, in the first inning. Yeah. I think that's what it was. We end up losing by that score. I think we Well, scored- and to be fair, their pitcher, who wasn't a BB thrower – No, threw junk. Was, was a pitcher. Yeah. So he, know how, he knew how to pitch to us. He knew that's how right. to throw us away, so we hit pop-ups. He was pretty good. Can't, yeah. take, can't take that away from them. No, no. He, he was it's good. Just, 
he brought our second guy in, the good guy in, just too late. Who no hit them. Right. Once he came in, he no hit them. It was well, over. So the other thing was uh, we only scored two runs, and I knocked them in. But in the newsletter the next day, Ralph Quattrucci, excuse me, Ralph Quattrucci knocked in the only run. I'm like, okay, now here's the kicker in this. Yeah, we were bummed out we lost because you're going to get a replica of the World Series ring. So that was pretty cool. So in August, they are inviting all the fantasy campers, a fantasy day at Fenway Park to watch the Red Sox. So what we find out is the championship team gets to go on the field and gets awarded their rings. Right. We didn't know that. And I'm like, oh, my God, my dream come true. Yeah, it would have been. We did get to play in Fenway, though. We played in Fenway. We got when that, yeah, the other thing we got to do as part of this fantasy camp, we actually got to play ball at Fenway. Two innings. You couldn't run on the infield. I don't know. But Fred, was, there was rules it was, about – It was unbelievable yeah. because I'm, I'm in the outfield. We're, we were outfielders. Sniffing the grass. We're diving. <laughs> A ground ball comes to me. I ran up to the wall and slammed into it just because – and I actually I was there going, Ted Williams played this position. Right, right. You know? So it was pretty surreal. Well, but- we started in the bullpen, remember? Just fucking around yeah. in the bullpen. And, yeah. And, uh, yeah, it, that, was, that was a lot of fun. Yeah, it was. But the year we went with Dad – Yeah, that was it, special. Because we had – so a lot of the players came back for that one. And they were B players, by the way. They weren't the superstar, the Red Sox players. No, but they were the fun guys. You they remember? Were, you remember who the biggest a hole was? Well, yeah. I don't want to say their names. Uh, there was a big a hole there. Who's on this? By the way, this autographed bat that's got a lot of good, you know, people yeah. on there. Well, what, you know what's funny about that? The the it's, uh, Carl, Carl Yastrzemski, Dwight Evans. Dwight Evans, uh, G- Al Bumbry, which I don't know why he was at a Red Sox. Did he play for the Red Sox for a while? No, he was a coach. And then this guy named – this guy right here who's now in the Hall of Fame. Who is that, Jim Rice? Yeah, do you remember when we walked up to him to talk to him? Well – He wasn't very nice to us. Well, the last year, the last time we went – so when I was done – and I learned this from the previous camps. I got on the treadmill after we were done all day to stay loose. Every day, Jim Rice was next to me, running next to me. So we would talk. It was very pleasant. So the last day of the camp, we're leaving. And my brother's there. I said, hey, Ralph, I want to get a picture with with Jim. Come on over. Hey, Jim, do you mind if I take a picture with you? Yeah, I do. (laughs) Me and Ralph are laughing. No, seriously, do you mind? Yeah, I do. Yeah, get away. (laughs) I was like, wow. Uh, Yeah. Okay. Now, look – in fairness, he hadn't been in the Hall of Fame at that point. He's probably a lot nicer now. Well, the, you know, it's funny because the, the, the not superstar players were personable. Yeah. We would have bar. Oh my we God. would have beers with them in the bar. Drago was a blast. Drago, um, uh, Bill Lee, Bit, Butch uh, Hobson. Uh, all of them were great. Center fielder. Who was that? Tom? Rick Miller. Miller, yeah. one of the guys I used to watch all the time. Yeah. Like Carl Yastrzemski was there. And – What's funny about Carl Yastrzemski, when, when we did a little clinic out in the field, couldn't have been any nicer because he's talking about baseball, right? right? He's talking about his stance and what he used to do. But when he had to go in and sign autographs, you could tell he just didn't want to be there. And you've got people there who are just fanboys, right? right. Who, like when I was growing up, Carl Yastrzemski was it for me. Right. And he was – and Dwight Evans, too, who I absolutely love. But – he, I overheard him say, I got to be here because I got a personal, personal contract with these guys. And I'm like, I kind of get it, but it was a little Yeah, dis- but then you got Drago's drinking with us at no, the bar. the other guys. Bill Lee drinking with us at the bar. And then last all, night you feel like you're leaving all your best friends. That's I right. Mean, it, it, and we it was, got it was a, friendly with them, and they used to bust our chops, and we could bust theirs. I have two, like, great memories from all three years of that. There's a lot of memories, but two that stand out. One was when I, the first year in the locker room, there's Johnny Pesky, completely naked, scratching his sack, <laughs> talking about Ted Williams. And I'm like, okay, if this doesn't say baseball, I don't know what. No, wait, what they used to do is a group of people would say, Johnny, tell us a story. <laughs> so there'd be eight naked, guys around him. And out, everything. He's, talking, just, he's like, just grabbing him. Jesus Christ, scratching his. And but then he the was last. Great. He was great. Johnny Pesky. Oh, no, no, no. And he's what was the other up. thing he did? Remember? Bungos right. in the outfield. John oh, and I yeah. are standing in the outfield, and we're looking at each other going, Johnny Pesky is hitting us fungo fly <laughs> balls. What the hell is going on? And we on? would catch one, and he'd go, oh, you got that one here. Yeah. Boom, right yeah. over our heads. All right, and the other memory, because every year they would let us play against the players. 
right? <laughs> yeah. So there I am, lefty, and I'm looking. It's Bill Lee pitching. I go, oh, my God, Bill Lee, who could strike me out. I know if he just threw a fastball, I'm done. What he does is he throws a curveball that literally starts at my head, and I dive out of the box like an idiot, and the thing just floats right in as a strike. And he is laughing his ass off that I would flop. Now what I'm expecting on the next pitch is he's going to throw me a fastball, and he's going to – that's it. He threw me the same pitch. And you know what I did? I stood in, and I hit it to the shortstop, and I was able to beat it out for a single. Oh, really? Yeah, because I went with it, and I did what I was supposed to do, and he was laughing the whole time. He was – I loved Billy. As a matter of fact, in 2008 – I had him autograph a couple of his famous, this oh, book yeah. called The Wrong Stuff. That's, the, that's him dressed as a spaceman. And then he was a complete communist, right? He went to Cuba oh, yeah. all the time to play baseball. Yeah. So it's this little red book. And he signs everything the same, which I just love. What, Earth? Yeah, Earth. And then he, right here he writes, Bill Lee, Earth, and then the date, 2008. He signed oh. a baseball for mom. Uh, yeah, the they, they, that's the thing. So I had, I had, uh, Louis Tiant's World Series ring on my yeah. finger with a picture next to Louis Tiant. Yeah. Mom was in love with Butch Hobson. There she is, big smile uh, with Butch, Butch Hobson. Butch Hobson was in love with Mom. Well, whatever, whatever yeah. it was. Louis Tiant really liked her. Yeah. So we had, and Bill Lee would always point us out and say the Q brothers. It was so much fun. They really well, made you feel like you were part of it. Yeah. And we were, like I said, you know, we were really in shape that year. So we were running for everybody yeah i mean every time we'd be running around the bases and we'd get in the dugout huffing and puffing hey quattrusi why don't yeah. you get up there need for- another one. Oh my god so i got in trouble because uh i was playing center field and a much older guy i don't know if you remember this a ground ball comes out to me in oh, the field. <laughs> yeah. i come bombing in i look up and he's halfway to first base not even close i throw it to first and throw the guy out and uh, in the kangaroo court, he got busted for it, for getting thrown out by the center fielder. I felt terrible about that, too. That yeah, was they stupid. were mad. I remember that. They were pissed. But I, you don't, you're not even thinking. I'm just thinking, I got the ball. I'm looking up. He's there. I'm going to throw it. And we won the Twin Towers Award. Remember that? We won no. the trophy. Yeah, you gave me the trophy. I don't remember that. Yeah, of course you don't. What did we win that for? For just at the end, they gave a bunch of awards out. You know, MVP. Of the yeah. Thing. We got the Twin Towers. Uh, I probably gave you that because you didn't get an MVP. I felt bad, I guess. I deserve the MVP. Maybe. That the That's not the point. MVP. You didn't get it. I made one for you. I remember I made a fake one. Fugazi MVP. <laughs> he did. He anyway, did. That, those three, and the one with dad was that. And frankly, you know, mom showed up. Uh, Rose showed oh, up. And your, your and third wife. Soon-to-be third ex-wife showed yeah. up. She was fun. And she if was, I remember, oh, no, I can't say that. Yeah, I, she was hanging out with people, having does a great Abby time. Does Abby watch this? I just remember Bill Lee and all these guys coming up to me going, what the hell? How about Joe? Remember Joe? I do. The Irish Joe. guy? What did Joe say to you? Joe was like, you, you, something's wrong here. You're going to Get away from that one. She's <laughs> nuts. <laughs> this is before I was married, too. Anyway. Yeah, was before you were married. Long story short. It doesn't matter. That was, fact, some that was great... the first time my dad met Abby. Yes. Right? That was the first time yeah. they met her. No, that was, I had so much fun at those. And, and the thing is, you get there and you kind of look at this. There are people who are there every year. And they come off as kind of fanboys. I mean, they're guys 15 years in a row. They know everything. They yeah. know all the players. By the time you leave, you're hugging those guys and loving yeah. everybody as if you're part of that crew, too. It's so, it was so much fun. Well, you're playing so much baseball. Yeah, and every it's a lot night, of baseball. You're going out and hanging out in the bars with all the players. Well, and, and you're being treated. You walk into the locker room. There's beers everywhere. You got people that can massage your legs. It's, you're treated like a ball player. Oh, and yeah. the other year, the 2008, we were there. Remember uh, – uh, John Lester was down there training. Oh, John Lester just got diagnosed with cancer. Right. I just couldn't believe how big he was. Yeah. Like, it's just Well, well that was – that's funny that you say that. So, so we uh, – the last year, we're in the batting cages. And uh, I'm in the cage, and I'm, I'm just nutting the ball. I'm just hitting beautiful – these beautiful shots. And I'm, I'm just thinking, oh, my God, I am so good. All of a sudden, all the minor league players who were also there at the same time, the real minor league players, they go into the batting cage. You hear them hit the ball. It sounded like little bombs yeah, going off. Yeah. And I'm like, oh, my God, I suck. <laughs> well, the other thing I learned is you just realize, you know, it's, it's luck and it's genetics. It's all kinds of things. Obviously, these guys train very well. But you look at the hands on these guys. 
Now, Bill Lee could play any sport he wanted to play. That guy was an amazing, is an amazing athlete. He's still playing now, I think. I still think he puts teams together and goes yeah. all over the country. And the Rick Burlsons and the, who was the catcher? Rich Gedman was there Rich one Gedman. year. And yeah. you look at these guys and you realize, wow, there's a reason they're doing what they do because they're just built for it. So well, when I saw up. John Lester, you're looking at, but you see Pesky, this little dude. Right. And yeah, the, but that's, he wasn't the norm. Like Dustin Pedroia isn't the right. norm. Right. No, I got it. Ralph but, and I, what are you, five, uh, I'm 5'8", five you're 5'8", five Ralph? No, no, right. no, I'm 5'6", five, 5'7". Six, five, so these guys most. are 6'2", six 6'3". Yeah. Six but it's the hands, too. You look at the yeah. hands, and you're like, oh, my God. So, so you feel, listen, it was great to go out there and play, I, I, and it was really an unbelievable experience. Uh, right. our, you know, we went back three, we went three times. Right. So that tells you our love for baseball. I think about it now. Like, uh, I stopped playing softball. I can't remember what year it was, but I, uh, I pulled both groins black and blue, a calf muscle. And I'm like, yeah, it's probably time to hang it up. But there were guys playing that were in their 60s and 70s. Yeah, I was playing right up until about five years ago. I'd still play. It's just, it took too much time. And, you know, part of the reason I quit was the guys still treat it like they're in high school. Well, that's kind of silly. And I just was like, I just don't care that much. So I got into golf and then the bowling took over and now it's all that stuff. But I miss playing baseball. I miss every once in a while I pull the glove out. I do yeah. that stupid thing where you put it against your face. Yeah. And there's a lot of great memories. I mean, it's it just, I just oiled up my glove like dad taught me. Yeah. I, I don't just I, did that. I, yeah. So last year, last year I played softball for the first time on a friend's league. I said, listen, if you need a guy, I, I want to play. He goes, all right. So these guys didn't know me at all. They didn't know if I could play or not. So they go, listen, uh, we're going to uh, – we'll put you in the field. You got to sit the first inning. So I get up. I hit the ball. Beautiful. <clears throat> Next inning, I go out in the outfield. I'm in right field. A ball goes to the right center. All I do, I take two steps to back them up, and my calf just <laughs> popped, popped, and I go limping in. Now, I could still bat, and I, yeah. I went three for three, but I had a limp to first base – and have a pinch runner. And I said to the guy, I go, look, uh, I don't want to screw up my golf game because I play golf now. Yeah. I, I can't do it. I mean, yeah. I just can't do it. It so. is amazing how quick it can go. Oh, my God. It, it was quick. The too. worst uh, injury I ever had, I never got hurt in baseball. I was playing, I decided one year to try street hockey, like an official street hockey league. Big mistake. <laughs> and I was playing with a bunch of guys, and we're playing a league we had no business being in. And it wasn't rollerblades or anything. You're just running on feet. Yeah. But my friend Tim – had this idea that he's ambidextrous and he could play with any side his straight his stick was straight and the last thing I remember is he comes running over me flips his stick around and my foot hits his stick and my knee my leg goes straight up and I popped a groin muscle like I've never popped in my life it was the most painful thing I've ever experienced and just like you so it took about six months to heal and yeah. I go to play my first baseball game I hit the ball as soon as I turned to go to first base popped it again that's what happens. Once and there weren't enough that. players, so I had to stay at first base oh. and play first base. I had to stay. I, I was normally center fielder, but they put me at first base. But it, we're too old for this shit. Hey, since you said that, since you brought up street hockey, uh, do you remember the rinks dad used to make? Yeah. So we used to have this giant ice skating rink in the backyard, and he created his own Zamboni with a plastic bucket with holes in the bottom and a squeegee. Uh, with hot water. We had lights and everyone in the neighborhood would come over. Well, so I'm in goalie one day and uh, somebody take, and we're using a, a regular puck, right? Th that the hockey players use. Someone <laughs> takes a slap shot. I don't even know how old I was, maybe 12, 13. Someone takes a slap shot right off my shoulder. Like it felt like a bullet. Okay. And I'm whining about it. My father's like, ah, quit it. You're a baby. Get up there. Get up there. Okay, fine. So my dad gets in goal. Someone gives him a slap shot. Next day, we got the little orange pucks. You right, know, the little right. rubber ones that don't hurt? Yeah. But that thing, I mean, we used to play for hours. Yeah, and, and that's and why the way, dad I and uh, I could never compete with what he did. Like, I've tried to do stuff for the kids and all that. It, it, what he did and what mom and dad did. Well, I was going to say the both of them. I mean, uh, it's, it, it, it defies any logic. Remember all the Little League cookouts they used to have? All of it. I'm just saying all of it, including yeah. going to all the games. Remember mom fell off the back one time, the back yeah. of the stands? Yeah. They've been, you know, drove us everywhere. I, I could never fulfill <laughs> – I could never do for my kids what they did. And that's, that's enough of don't that. We don't have, that's, that's a big part of why we love sports. Yeah. They, they foster. I told you mom is the one who taught me tennis. 
I don't remember her playing tennis. She, she, I, I never forget. She taught me mm-hmm. tennis and I'll never, and I love tennis and it's because of her. So, you know, wow. and Patty and Maria, both have, our sisters, you know, I don't know why we didn't invite Patty and Maria to the fantasy camp. Patty would have kicked ass in that fantasy camp. You're, you're right about that. <laughs> She, she would have beat us I all. I think she was a little pissed we didn't invite her. I think she might have been and probably should have been. But don't you wish Steve could have gone just one time? I would have been great to have yeah. the whole infield filled out like that. Yeah. That would have been pretty unbelievable. But what memory? Right. Well, I think we've uh, yeah, I know. We're, overstayed people, our welcome here. Uh, okay. That was a good one. Yeah. And again, uh, I'm sure I'm going to remember 17 sports movies as soon as this is done. But yeah, and see, I just froze. Well, that's not my fault. That's all right. I can cut to another camera. See, um, you can't do that. So, So. okay, so that's it for this week. Um, I hope you enjoyed this little uh, sports sidetrack. I did talk to Steve Ralph about maybe getting on next week's show. Okay, another brother. I want to see what other names are on this. Um, Well, all there's Dick Drago right there. Yeah. Uh, Louis Tiant. um, I'm trying to think who else. Yeah, remember Brooks Robinson came to the first one? That was why he was at a Red Sox camp. Yeah, I got a great picture of me and Brooks. Yeah, there's uh, Louis right there. I love Louis Tiant. Yeah, but so those Steve's, guys, uh, the beautiful thing about all those guys, you gave them anything, they signed it. Right. All right, so Steve so, is going to join us. What's this? We don't know the subject. I don't know. Beautiful. Good. I got I to gotta think about that. Uh, maybe, get, maybe get something from him. Maybe something he wants to talk about. Okay. Uh, but this was fun. I appreciate the little okay. look back Sounds on good. memory lane. Yep. So, uh, great job. Sorry about the freezing up a little bit. We'll, I'll try to edit as much as I can out of it. We'll be fine. But everybody, thanks for watching again. And – Hey, leave comments. Let us know what you think or give us something you want us to talk about. Whatever, all right? Everyone stay safe. Have a great week. All right, John. Have a good week. Bye, everybody.